Hello everyone, welcome to module 6, working with APIs in NATM. This is gonna be one of the most technical things that you would have probably seen so far in all the videos, all the modules, all the courses that you've consumed. Why? Because even though this is a basic course, the intention behind the basic course is actually to make you master of the basics. And APIs are one of the most crucial elements that you need to master if you want to understand and work on complex workflows in an ATM. Let's dive into it. What is an API? An API, application programming interface, lets two apps talk to each other. It's as simple as that. Now let me put all of this into a simple analogy. Okay, you can see the diagram that there's one app Right, and then there's an external service. Any app wants to connect with the external service, it would need an API between it, like a link or something. So basically, APIs are translators. Okay, so let me put this into a simple analogy. Uh, let's say you went to a fine dining restaurant and you went there and you saw the menu, you're reading the menu, and now you know that what you want to order is paneer lababdar and cheese garlic naan. Right, so now you know that you want to eat those. How would Paneer lababdar and garlic cheese naan come on your table. How would they appear on your table? Would you cast a spell or something? Probably not. How would you do that? You would call the waiter. You tell the waiter that, hey man, uh, I need uh, paneer lababdar, cheese garlic naan, can you please bring that? The waiter will go to the kitchen, to the chef. It will tell the chef that, hey, can you please prepare uh, cheese garlic naan, paneer lababdar. The moment that the chef has prepared those, the waiter would take that and the waiter will bring that to your table. And then, of course, you can consume it, eat it, throw it, whatever you want to do with it. So in this analogy, you are yourself or your app. The chef is the external service who would get something done for you. The moment that you want something to be done, it would get it done for you. And the waiter is the API. Now, I think it would help you understand even better that what an API is, is basically a translator or kind of a communicator that takes information from you, goes to the external service, translates that information in terms of your requirements to the external service. External service prepares the content, gives it to the API. The API, the middleman, the translator, it comes back to you or your app and it provides the data to you in the format that you can consume. Right, the waiter would not just bring paneer lababdar and throw it on your table. And the waiter would serve you, right? So this entire act of communicating, bringing the food, serving, all of this is the job of APIs. So this is what an API is. Wherever you hear this term, you simply understand that it's kind of a mediator between you or your NATN cloud and the external tool which you are going to use. In NATN, APIs are your gateways to connecting with almost any service or data source on the internet. If any website or any tool which has its own API documentations available, right? If you want to search it, you can simply Google search. Lots and lots of possibilities, right? Any service which is out there on the internet, if it's open source, if its APIs are available openly to everyone, like those are public APIs, you can simply fetch those, uh, put those on your editor and start using that service the way that you would use it on their website. You can simply use it here on editor as well. So I hope you got it. If you still have any questions, please feel free to text me. I hope that you got the analogy. If not, let's dive into some more practical uh, implementations and then maybe you can get it even better. So now let me show you the holy grail, the Swiss army knife of NATN for connecting all the APIs, which is the HTTP request node. Perfect. Let's search that HTTP request. This is what I'm talking about. Makes an HTTP request and returns the response data. There are lots and lots of options here. We'll of course dive into this one by one. So how does this HTTP request works is basically every tool, every service out there has its own API documentations available. And since you want to connect those API documentations to your NATN, you would use this HTTP request node. How do you connect that is basically there are some kind of piece of codes there or some information there in the documentation that you need to fetch and you need to paste into this HTTP request node and you would be able to use those APIs. So let's see how this HTTP request node works. This is how the node looks like. There is first option is method. 
Now you don't need to know what this exactly is. Uh, there are different kind of methods, different kind of operations that you want to perform with the API requests. And the two most important ones which you would be using, uh, and believe me, you wouldn't be using any other ones, uh, at least so far in my experience, I have not used it any other. Uh, it's get and post. That's it. How would you know which one to use? I would just show you in a bit. Everything that you need to fill here all comes in the API documentation, which is being provided by any tool that you have to take that information and fill it here. Okay. Now I'll show you how to do it. So let's take on one of the tools, which I know about that's Gina AI. What Gina AI does is basically Gina AI is kind of a web crawler, web scraper, deep search tool. It can search any website, any information, any such thing that you want to search using this particular AI tool. So when you open this up, the very first thing that you would see is, which is the API documentation. You can simply go there, click on that. It would take you directly to the API documentation. Many times the API documentation would look like this. Many times it would look very different. What we need to find is kind of this particular keyword somewhere, which is curl. It's kind of a trick that I've discovered, but find out this curl code. Okay. What you need to do is we came onto the reader API. Reader API is of course scraping one. So now what we just want to do is we need to take this curl code and import this curl code into our NA10. We'll go back to our NA10. There is a small option here, import curl. We'll click on this. We'll paste the curl code here. And here you'll see it's saying www.example.com, which basically means that we have to give it the website that we want to be scraped. So what is the website that we want to scrape? Let's scrape uh, my performance marketing agency's website. Visitmarketing.com is the website that I want to scrape. I'll come back here. I paste this entire thing here. How I need to paste it is exactly how it's written. www.visitmarketing.com. This is how I want to paste this. And I simply click on import. The moment that I do that, uh, it would automatically fetch every information that it needs to be filled in here. What we can simply do is execute step. And the moment that we click this, now you see this has scraped out uh, the entire information from my website. We'll go to the table view and you'll see all the information which is present there with all the images, all text of the images, website links, uh, hyperlinks, downloads, uploads, all the information that is there on my website in HTML code format. It has scraped out everything. I actually use this Gina AI tool with my NA10. And now what I can do is simply I can take this information uh, this entire thing and put this entire thing into an AI agent, which would kind of summarize it for me. So let's do that as well. Let's create a summary chain. We take this as input and let's pin this data and perfect. It has created 91 items. So this summarization chain has created these items. It has provided me a summary from this HTTP request node, whatever the information the website was giving it has summarized it Bizwit marketing specializes in helping e-commerce brand uh, do from this to this uh, the agency has demonstrated success with case studies showing a significant revenue growth from 11,000 to 470,000 and yeah of course that's all true that's the entire summary that it has created so yeah now you saw that what is the capability of HTTP request you can simply use any tool which has its own API documentation it will provide you a curl code which will provide different elements of what to do what to use Curl code is the best way to go about it. If you're not able to find the curl code, what you will actually do is you can simply that wherever there's a get written here, that's the method that you want to keep in your N8N. Uh, you can see this and the URL which is being provided there, that is what you can use to put it in the URL. There's no authentication query headers. There's no such requirement from the API. So you don't need to do that. So this is a very simple example of how to use HTTP request tool and how to connect an API. Now, I would dive into something much deep, much technical, and let's build a good workflow together, which is basically scraping out LinkedIn posts of competitors or any person, any targeted accounts that you want to keep. We'll just take three accounts. You can do infinite, totally your call. And the tool that I would be using for this would be Appify. I'd show you what Appify is. It's a holy grail of APIs. So this was a small example of how you can use HTTP request node. And in the next video, we'll create a LinkedIn competitor research tool together. Okay. So see you in the next video.